right, so we're we're a year later. Like you're you're experienced now. You're like a veteran head coach, John Shire. What what did you the biggest thing you learned? Now, a year later from being in that head coaching chair was what? Well, you know, there's, I, I could, me and you could sit here all day and say all the things, things that you learn on and off the court. I think the biggest thing though, is when you go through a year, uh, we have a lot of adversity that we faced is you, you gain a deeper belief and trust in yourself of that, what you can do, what your staff can do. and. Uh, what our program is capable of. And for me, that's what I learned from year one. I mean, we were tested, but to see how our team battled, uh, to see the, the moments we were in, we were able to pull out. Uh, that's what I'm most proud of, but it's also what I learned the most, because until you do it, it's what I tell some of our, because we have a lot of freshmen that play, but you can practice and work all you want. The best way to gain confidence is to do it in a real game. Yeah. What, what was the most nervous you were last year? Give me the one time when actually, might have been the first game, I don't know. Uh, there's, there's no feeling like the first game. Yeah. <laughs> there's no feeling. I mean, uh, you know, was, we were playing Jacksonville and, you know, I felt, you know, Jacksonville with the year they had the, the season before, uh, they were big, they had, you know, a lot of, you know, high major players on their team. Uh, you know, I felt there was gonna be a heck of a game and uh, we got to win this one, you know? And Can't so I remember that, that first one. Yeah, the, the, the yeah. day of the game felt like it was two weeks. Really? <laughs> you know, just, I was ready for it to come around. And uh, it was good to get that first one under my belt. You got 27. I think that puts you uh, 1,175 behind <laughs> Coach K now. So you're making up ground. <laughs> yeah, right? quickly. Quickly, yeah, quickly. Exactly. <laughs> got a few to go. You know, NIL the portal. I mean, there's so many things that have gone on in this sport in the last year or two that have coaches right now, um, you know, frustrated to some degree, right? The recruiting right. calendar, you can go on and on the extra COVID year for kids, a, a bunch of different things. Uh, now that you've been in this seat for a year, how do you, how do you look at where the sport is? You played it. You obviously love college basketball the health of, the, of college basketball right now, where, where do you see it? I think the health overall is is fine. You know, we, we still get really talented players. You have really good teams. You have a lot of excitement, especially as you get towards the, the thick of it in terms of February and March. Uh, but there's a lot of competition now with other, uh, other leagues, other opportunities for guys to play, which I've always been in favor of. Like if you don't want to come to college, then you shouldn't come to college. But so to have other opportunities, I think is great. Um, I think we have to separate what's best for coaches, but then also what's best for players. And any decision that is made by the NCAA, by conferences, by college basketball, and the different, you know, we have a bunch of different committees, it has to be about what's best for the players. And I don't know that we've adjusted to the speed that our sport has changed with the rules that are in place, with the recruiting calendar, which would, what's most conducive to see these guys in really good settings. And um, so we've, I've been fortunate to be on you know, a couple calls and those conversations have come up, but we have a lot of work to do. <laughs> we have a lot of work to do. And you know, I know you've had conversations with recently with Dan Gavitt and he's incredible with what he does and but we need we need a, a lot of work to, a lot of work needs to be done yeah I mean I think certainly Charlie Baker um, is trying here especially with NIL right I mean they're trying to figure this out what would you do with NIL like what if, if you were running things right now and again it's kind of difficult because there are certain things you can't do right, right. legally Right. Um, how would you approach NIL right now? Well, first of all, who's running things? You know, that, that's, yeah. I think, where, and that's not a knock on anybody in particular because I think everybody wants to point to somebody else. I think that's the, the biggest problem. And look, I'll say this. We've had some amazing coaches in the past few years retire who have been in the game and are passionate about the game. And, of course, Coach K, you have... Jay Wright, you have uh, uh, Coach Williams. Behan, you have yep. uh, yep. Roy Williams. Yep. How are we not tapping into them to see 
what they would do. They, they don't have skin in the game other than wanting what's best for the sport. Yeah. And the, the so that's one thing I would do. Like, I would pull them in. Just like the NBA has pulled in Coach K, I would pull those guys in to talk about what they would do. You know, and I'm sure all of them in their own ways, I'm sure they felt like it was time, but also the, the nature of the sport. You have to be, you have to love it. Like, you have to love, you know, NIL. You need to become very aware what's happening. And, you know, if I was them, I would have done the same thing. And so that's one thing. And then second of all, I think any time you're dealing with something, there, there's not even playing, it's not even even playing field, right? And so depending on what, should it be? Absolutely, it should be in terms of the rules that there are, right? Yeah. So if you're in another state, I'm in another state, right. Right. it can differ yeah. what you're allowed to do. Uh, it can, the NCAA, you know, of course, has been hands off in terms of you know, what exactly is defined and what isn't. And so the more, the more rules that there are where they're enforced, the better. Yeah. Well, and, there needs to be some consistency. And with, with, with rules, there needs to be transparency. And so right now there's not transparency. Uh, I think that's a big thing. But my biggest question is who is in charge with that? And college basketball needs to be connected to me us in the women's sport should be really connected. Women's basketball and us. Uh, football has their way of doing things, and we need to be able to do that for our sport because it's different than anybody else. And, uh, you know, so that's how I feel about it all. The portal's been crazy. Right. Luckily, you avoided it for the most part. Right. You were fortunate to retain yeah. as much as you could. Um you know, in terms of getting Kyle back and getting Tyrese back, how surprised were you, especially with Kyle? Because I think most people felt like Kyle was going to be a first rounder. Tyrese probably as well would have gone in the first, but I think Kyle was, you know, I think we talked about it. You know, most NBA teams had him as a first rounder, maybe even as a guy who could have went in the teens, and he didn't even really think about leaving, did he? Well, no, he was very set on coming back from the beginning. And, you know, I wasn't surprised uh, based on my conversations with Kyle since he committed to Duke. But at the end of the day, it's an amazing decision that should be celebrated yeah. uh, by not just Duke fans, but college basketball fans because he absolutely had an opportunity to go pro. Uh, part of it was he needed to get healthy. Uh, you know, he had surgery after the season where I think you're going to see a new and improved Kyle Filipowski this year with his athleticism, his explosiveness coming back. Like, he was hardly able to bend last year because of, you know, the way his hips, um, the way his hips were. Uh, look, we had eight players return. Four of them clearly had opportunities in, in many different situations. You could point to Flip, Tyrese. Mark Mitchell, Jeremy, uh, all of them in their different situations. People leave in those situations. Sometimes you're at a school for you know, multiple years and you feel it's time. And so for all four of them to make the decision to come back, it's, it's a big deal. Like that's, that's, a, that's a big deal. Yeah, I mean, the, the expectations are a little different this year from even a year ago. The pressure may not be different because you were going as a rookie head coach. I mean, there was whether you want to admit it or not, there was pressure. No, I, no, I admit it. I, I know right. that. No, it's... Look, if, if you think I'm blind to the fact of following Coach K and being the coach at Duke, that doesn't come with expectations or pressure, whatever you want to call it. The thing I can promise you is the pressure I put on myself is the most. I, I can promise you that. And that's why, you know, I'm hard on myself before critiquing any of my guys. I'm always critiquing myself first. And, uh, but at the end of the day, you got to have fun with this. Uh, you want the opportunity to play for the highest level, right? You get a chance to, you know, get everybody's best shot. And that's what, that's what I, that's all I've ever known being at Duke from my days as a player to coaching. And so I wouldn't have it any other way. I can promise you our guys wouldn't have it any other way either. Uh, thanks for the time. Thanks Good for being having me. here in, in, in Durham in July. Beautiful. Yeah. It's quiet, too. It is quiet. Very quiet.
Yeah, it'll, it'll get it'll get loud as the year goes on. Yeah, well, I'll be back. Yeah. I'll be back. All right.